What's going on dudes and dudettes? So when it comes to the Chargers, yes, they have finally and officially named Derek Ainsley their ex-safeties coach, the new defensive coordinator. I know they're reporting that yes, it was like a week ago and then the next video it wasn't 100% true and they did some more interviews and stuff, but yes, it is now official and they did name like their other guys in the official press release. It was Nussmeyer, the quarterback's coach, and Jet Howard, as well as the linebacker's coach, and you know, what was his name? Tommy, the other guy, whatever, that I mentioned with, who's gonna be now the cornerbacks as well. So, good luck to those guys. We'll see what they can do. But, like I said, I heard a lot of good things in the coaching world about Ainsley or Ansley, however you say it. So, we'll see how this goes. And then when it comes to Duke basketball, yes, this last Saturday, I believe it was, they played Virginia Tech. And we're able to beat them this time. I know they had a tough game the last time they played them up there in Blacksburg, but they were able to get the victory 81 to 65 at home. They are now 15 and 0 at home, which is nice, but they do have no, they did beat North Carolina. They do have North Carolina this Saturday in North Carolina. So we'll see how that goes. But John Shire, the new head coach, was able to break an 80 year old record at Duke where he is now the all-time winningest first year head coach there, so he's got it by one now. Remember last video, I think we talked that he tied the record at 20, so now he has 21. So it's nice that he was able to get that little victory that even Coach K wasn't even able to get in his first year. So we'll see how this goes. They aren't officially ranked. I didn't look at the AP poll this morning, but we'll see where they rank and going into that game, like I said, against North Carolina this weekend. Then when it comes to the Anaheim Ducks, yes, I think they're still on the road. They were over there in Carolina, of all places, playing the Hurricane, and were able to get that victory 3-2 to two the other day, so that's nice. A nice couple more victories in a week. We'll see what can happen. It's kind of weird, because I always thought that NHL was going into the playoffs, too, but I think they're kind of like in the mid part, too, so I think I'm ahead of schedule when it comes to NHL, because I was hearing like guys are getting traded and leaving the team and all this other stuff, so... I haven't heard any Ducks get traded, so we'll see. Then when it comes to the Atlanta Hawks, yes, they recently made a hire over the weekend with an ex-Duke player in Quinn Snyder, who was recently the Utah Jazz head coach, but left there kind of like on bad terms a little bit, just didn't like the direction they were all going and stuff. And he's still a good coach, so everyone was wondering when he was going to get his new opportunity. And it is kind of weird that they were able to or he was able to get this contract. It was like a nice four or five year deal, even though it's still the middle of the season or a NBA season. You usually don't see that with players or with coaches, but I think even Joe Mazzula of um, Boston and I think even maybe the coach up there in the Nets were able, able to get a new contract as well. So overall, it's a nice thing to have another Duke coach out there or ex-Duke player. So we'll see how this goes with him. I think... It should be interesting because they are still in the playoffs, Atlanta, but we will see. And then Travis Barker recently injured his ring finger again, which I don't know if if it's going to put a hold or any like stop start time. So when it comes to the concert coming up soon, I know they are going to start their world tour, I think in March. I forget when exactly the date is, but... I know that goes on to pretty much throughout the whole year because then in later half of the year, they will be in Vegas on that When We Were Young <clears throat> concert as well. So we'll see how this goes. I know he is one of the better drummers out there and he still has times where he's had surgery on one of his hands and played drums with just one hand, which is pretty crazy, especially when he was like in plus 44 with Mark Hoppus. I think he did that as well. but. We'll see. Hopefully it's not some crazy Kardashian voodoo that he's gotten, but we'll see. And then Mike Shinoda recently talked about in a couple of interviews he's had. I think it was more due to the that last CD I talked about, one of my last videos about Meteora reading, reaching like a 20, 25 year. I forget what the number was. I think it's 20 year anniversary, but... He did finally open up when it comes to Chester Bennington because a lot of people haven't really said much and even he hasn't really wanted to say much, but he did recently say that it was pretty difficult, especially in those early years, even just to be able to try to wrangle in Chester sometimes because he was off doing 
other stuff and sometimes they would not even know where he was whether it was after a show or right before a show something like that so Chester has always seemed to have a crazy past which obviously sucks because it probably stemmed from something when he was younger but then he obviously praised him as well because when it came to writing music and being in, in the band officially it was like nothing better so yeah it's obvious that we will always miss Chester and yes even the People you love the most have their own difficulties as well. If you love en love them enough, you will deal with it. So I guess we'll move on to, yes, one of the bigger things that happened this weekend. I was kind of off and on about this game. It was just too much anxiety watching the Lakers and Mavericks play yesterday on Sunday just because of how good of a game and how competitive of a game it was. Luckily, I was not watching earlier before halftime because apparently the Lakers were down by the most 27 points and even like 14 points at halftime but when I was watching it was pretty competitive but yes the Lakers were able to beat the Mavs 111 to 108 in the last couple seconds they did make that 27 point comeback which is the biggest since 2002 I don't know if that is in the Lakers history or NBA history but I know when it comes to teams playing this year of all the games put together in the NBA, I know teams that were at least down by 27 points at some point this year were 0-138, but now, of course, the Lakers have beaten that. Of course, my team is going to be the one doing it, but that's what happened, too, when it was that 2020 year where they made some of the trades, <clears throat> and they were finally starting to get this groove on, and then all of a sudden, everything stopped because of COVID, and then... It wasn't that surprising that once they got in the bubble in, in the bubble and were more focused on basketball, they were able to come out victorious. So I'm not saying I hope there's another stoppage of COVID, but I'm just saying that this team, as long as everything stays healthy and, you know, they're able to keep the camaraderie going, then I think they definitely have a chance to upset a lot of teams in the playoffs, in my opinion. But yes, one of the guys they recently traded for, Jared Vanderbilt, Played out of his mind. He had 15 points. Even though he's not a shooter, he still got a lot of putbacks and nice dunks and steals. He did have 17 rebounds for his position. Not like the tallest guy on the, the court, which is nice. And also had four steals. So doing it on the defensive side, helping out on Luka and Kyrie. Anthony Davis ended up with 30 points. Made a lot of big time plays down the stretch. A lot of points scored right there. Had 15 rebounds, four assists, a lot of blocks also. And then even LeBron James threw in 26 points, 8 rebounds, and somehow only had 3 assists. Usually he's higher in that, but I think that's starting to show that he has a lot more better players around him. So he may not get the actual stat of an assist, but he might get the hockey stat. So he probably did the pass before the pass to be able to get that third guy open. So... As long as the Lakers are winning, that's all that matters. And yes, LeBron did go down with some type of ankle thing. And for some reason, he kept playing. I was hoping he would go out and maybe rest up. But of course, he doesn't like to do that because he says it gets more stiff and harder to play with that if you sit down for too much. But he just was kind of, I don't know, it was frustrating. That's why I had to turn it off and go away. And luckily, they were able to still get the victory. And even after the game, he did say it's not feeling too great and I know they have a couple games stretch coming up where they're not playing the best of teams so he could probably take a game or two off if he really wants to but they are going to be facing a lot of teams that are ahead of them because even when it comes to the 13th I think they were in the 13th now they're in the 12th spot but even from 13 all the way up to five fifth or sixth place their only difference is like two to three games. So like I said, if you go on a mini run, three to five game win streak, then you could be all the way up from the bottom to the top, as one philosopher Drake said. So yes, we will see. Thanks for watching, people. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.